Hi guys, I hope that you guys are doing great today. Thank you so much for joining me on another Get Ready With Me. Today, instead of talking about the products, I am going to talk more about what I'm doing because I do list the products on the screen. So it is very, very important to start off by prepping your skin. So I am using serums, I'm using face mist, and I'm using a balm just because I have dry skin. So I need my skin to be very, very moisturized, but it's important to use products that work well with makeup because if not you can get a little bit of pilling which means that it can bunch up and turn into like little balls on your skin so it's important to find products that work really good with makeup so the ones that i use work amazing under makeup now i'm moving on and applying a concealer all over my eyelid all over pretty much my entire eye area i usually use eye primers or eye bases but this concealer is so good as a primer and a base it covers up any discoloration on your eye area and gives you a clean canvas. I have really been loving this product for my lips. It's very thin, super moisturizing, but doesn't feel thick or gunky on the lips. So it's really, really nice to prep the lips for makeup as well. And now I'm going to go in with this eyeshadow palette, which has a lot of neutral shades, a lot of shimmers. And I'm going to start off with a skin tone type of color. You want something that kind of matches your skin tone so that you can apply this to the crease with a fluffy brush. And this is just going to help out, kind of map out where you want to keep the rest of the shades. So I blend this out close to the brow bone and just make sure that I diffuse it all over that area. Make sure that it's nicely blended before I go in with my next color. And this palette is really, really nice. The shadows blend very effortlessly and you can create just very classic looks that you can use for work, for an event, for going out, just for any type of occasion. So now I'm going to go in with a smaller crease brush and I'm going to start building up the colors. So now I'm adding a bit of a darker brown underneath the first color that I placed. So this one, I'm going to blend it more on the outer corner, connecting it to the first color and kind of doing like that outer V technique where you keep the shades on the outer corner of the eye and also bringing it up to the crease area. And now I'm going to go in with a very light bone type of color and I'm going to place this with an eyeshadow flat brush on the inner lid area area and also covering almost the entire lid. So I am just slowly tapping it. Instead of swiping the shade, I do light taps and this helps to get the most pigment on your eye. It helps to concentrate the color where you want it to go. And you just keep grabbing and packing instead of just swiping it because that could give you like a patchy application. I'm also bringing the shade a little bit high up. I don't keep it exactly where my eye folds, like where my eyelid folds, because I want the eyelid to appear like it's a little bit bigger than what it really is. And now that I added that lid color, I'm gonna go back in with the crease brush and keep blending a little bit more of that brown just to make it look more defined and really crisp. So now I'm dragging this brown shade right towards the lid, kind of like if it was an eyeliner, connecting it to that outer V shape. Now that we are done with the eyeshadow, I always take a makeup remover wipe and really clean out the shape that I want for my eyes. So I want it to kind of go upwards to lift the eye and to make it look very clean and sharp. We also sharpen it up with concealer later on. Cleaning it with a makeup wipe just lets you see the way that it's going to look and you give it the shape that you want from the start before you go in with foundation and all of that. And it also helps to know where you're going to apply your liquid liner as well. It's kind of like a little cheat to know where to put your liquid eyeliner. Next, we're going to go in with a liquid eyeliner. I'm going to do a winged eye. So I always start out on the corner of the eye. On the outside, I do like a flick going upwards. You can do this as short or as long as you want. Sometimes I do it more dramatic. Sometimes I do it a little bit more simple. And then I just start to build up my winged liner from there. So I always do the outer 
line first and then I start filling it in. Sometimes I like to do it thick. Sometimes I prefer a just thinner line. So it all depends on the look that you're going for. But this eyeliner is really nice for beginners. I feel like it's very beginner friendly, easy to use. It's a little on the thick side, but it comes to a very thin point. So you can be very precise with it and it's super black and pigmented. So I really, really love it. Next up, I'm going to apply some mascara to my lashes before I apply false lashes. And the reason I do this is so that they blend in together better. If I don't put mascara on my real lashes, you can kind of see that my real lashes have a little bit of like eyeshadow fallout on them. And then when you put the false lashes, you can kind of see that and it doesn't look as neat and put together. So that's why I go in with mascara. Now I'm going to apply these Timu false lashes. I've been loving all of the lashes that I got from my Timu haul and I do have the links to the lashes on the haul it's a little confusing because I did get so many lashes but I have all of the links in my Timu haul video and these are pretty dramatic but they were very easy to put on and I feel like they just look so fluffy and so realistic even though they're dramatic so I really enjoy this look now we get to move on to our face products and I am starting off with an SPF and this is by F Paula's Choice. I heard that this SPF was very, very good underneath makeup and I can honestly say that it is amazing under makeup. As you can see, I'm a little rough with my face, but it blends out so easily. It doesn't really leave a white cast. Of course, at first it does a little bit, but it disappears really quickly and my makeup applied so perfectly on top of this SPF. It, I even forgot that I put it on honestly it's not too greasy or anything like that next I'm going in with this blurring primer I like to rotate my products a lot so that's why you see in a lot of my get ready with me videos it's always different products and that's because I like to have a rotation of the products that I haul I don't like to just have makeup sitting in my collection so every time I get ready I make it a point to bring out something that I haven't used in a while and really gather my thoughts on it so this combination this day I felt like I really really loved the complexion i felt like my skin just looked very healthy very dewy and it does help to kind of blur the skin at the same time so it's a really really good primer especially if you have skin like mine which is a little textured and dry On top of that, I went in with the matching skin tint. This is also by Iconic London, and I feel like this gives you the perfect coverage for a skin tint. The Summer Fridays one, I gave it a good review when I first tried it out, but I have been getting bad reactions. Every time I wear that, my skin feels like it's burning, and I don't even get a lot of coverage from that one. This one, I feel like it gave me the right amount of coverage. It's not heavy, it's not a full coverage, it's more of on the natural side, but it makes your skin look very healthy and luminous, glowy, and it doesn't feel greasy or nasty on the skin. My skin did not have any reaction to this, so I'm definitely keeping this in my collection. I'm really, really enjoying it. It feels super lightweight. I think it's great for everyday wear, but as you can see, I did more of like a glam look and I feel like it still turned out really, really nice, especially because my skin right now, we're going through a good phase. I don't have too many scars going on. This is probably the most even my skin has been in a really long time. So I'm really enjoying to keep the complexion more on the lighter side so that it doesn't feel so heavy. So now we're going to go in with concealer. This is the Bye Bye Under Eye Super Thick Concealer, but it feels so good and moisturizing if you have dry skin. But I got rid of the lightest shade and kept the darker shade because I noticed that the light shade was way too light for me. But this is going to be like a win or lose for some people. On my under eyes, I feel like it looks great because I do have drier skin and this just feels so creamy and smooth. So it really did apply super nice on the skin i love the way that my makeup turned out this day so i definitely recommend this concealer for people who have dry skin and the coverage is really really nice as well 
I'm going to go ahead and blend that out with a beauty blender. I always forget to let my concealer sit for a little bit, but if you let the concealer sit for a bit before you start blending it in, you do get a bit of like a more full coverage, but this concealer has amazing coverage. Look at the way that that under eye looks, like super moisturized, dewy. You do have to go in and set it and you have to be careful when you set it because if you bake right on top of this, you're going to get a lot of creasing. So I definitely suggest to use a powder, like a very light powder and set it with like a fluffy brush before you do any baking. So you'll see the way that I set this concealer. But if you do it that way, it's going to look really, really nice. So now I'm going to go in with some cream contour or this is a bronzer and contour at the same time. And this product is so creamy. I loved it so much. And for the nose contour, I'm using this new brush from Patrick Ta. I fell in love with it. It is the perfect width to do nose contour. It was super easy. I always usually struggle with my nose contour, but with this brush, it was just like, I could draw on exactly where I want my contour to go. I could choose the width of it and it just blended out really, really nice. And you also get, it's dual ended, so you can use the other side to blend out the product. Now I'm going to go ahead and blend the rest of the bronzer slash contour. I'm blending it into my neck because I have gotten a lot of sun lately. So my the rest of my body is very tanned, but I don't like to tan my face. So my face is pretty pale compared to the rest of my body. So I kind of bring that down my neck just so that it kind of matches matches and you don't really see like a line between my body and my face makeup and the way that this bronzer blended was a dream super super creamy and smooth easy to blend i have no complaints about it i really really enjoy this cream bronzer because it just it's very effortless to work with it and it leaves a very glowy beautiful luminous look to the skin as you can see and it really warms up the skin as well it has a very warm undertone and for those of you who are interested, mine is in the shade No Limits Motivate. I don't know if the shade is called Motivate. That's just what I'm looking at in the, in the package right now. But yeah, it's like a very warm shade. Next up, I'm going to show you these new Juvia's Place blushes that I got. I got two shades in them. These are the Blushed Liquid Blush. I did some swatches for you guys. This is Peach Rose. It's like a very peachy color, but it still has a pink undertone to it at the same time. These blushes are pigmented. This one is called Blush Lily. As you can see, the swatches are so intense. I would not recommend putting this directly on your face. Instead, I recommend working from your hand or from like a little dish or something because I made the mistake of putting some on my face the first time that I wore them and they were just so crazy pigmented that it took me so long to blend it out. So I learned from that. I work it into my hand and I then go into my cheek and you can still see that it's super duper pigmented and I'm not even using the amount that I put on my hand. They do give a very nice finish, very like dewy, radiant finish. So this went perfectly with all of the products that I was using. It just gave a very nice glow, healthy look to the skin. And I did go over it with a sponge just to tone it down a little bit because they are very intense, but I recommend them so much. They're, they have a lot of beautiful colors. Now I'm going to go ahead and mist my face just to get all of those products to kind of blend in and mix together, melt into each other. And then now I'm just going to add a little bit of concealer underneath my bronzer and contour just to really define the cheeks because I feel like I lost a little bit of like shape there. So if you ever feel like your contour went too far down, you can always put a little bit of concealer and really chisel out those cheeks exactly where you want the cheek color to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and set the under eyes. So I always pat my under eyes first before I apply powder. Probably did that off camera, but I'm using this Pat McGrath powder with a loose fluffy brush. And this is how I set this concealer before I do any baking so that it doesn't look super cakey or the product doesn't move around or just get ugly on me. So this really, really helps to just set it first. Take away some of that creaminess. And as you can see, this powder leaves your skin so smooth. 
so perfect it looks like you have no pores and it has nice coverage to it but it also has like this luminosity where it kind of looks like real skin it doesn't look extremely matte it is one of my favorite powders i forgot about it and that this is why i like to rotate my products because i do discover products in my collection that i don't give any more love to and it's always great to bring them back out now with a really big fan brush i'm applying a little sample size of this nars laguna bronze Bronzer. Laguna bronzer is such a classic. It's an oldie but a goodie. It really warms up the skin as well. Gives you that look of, you know, just a perfect tan. So I'm adding this to my cheeks, to my forehead, and also to my neck area again to blend all of those colors together and make it look cohesive. Now I am taking the same shades that I used on my eyes and I am applying them to the lower lash line with a pencil brush. So this brush is very small, it fits perfectly in the lower lash line and it won't make too much of a mess, but always work slowly in the lower lash line because it I've had times where I have done things too fast and I've gotten fallout on my cheeks or I've made it way too thick and then it looks too intense. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply a powder blush. I'm using this Valentino Sweet Rebel Eye to Cheek blush that I hauled not too long ago and I used it with a more fluffy, not so tightly packed brush so that I can get more of a wash of color and I really wanted to get the glow that this blush gives off. I feel like if you use like a very tight, dense brush, it's just going to be way too much pigment. I wanted it to be a little bit on the lighter side and this added a very nice warm touch to that blush. They went together really, really nicely. Next up, I'm going to go in with a highlight. This is from House Labs. I hadn't used this one in a long time either, and I love this highlight. It just melts into the skin. It's very thin in texture, so it just looks very lightweight on the skin, but packs a punch. It's pretty pigmented and just blinding, but in the perfect way. I believe this is in the shade Sunstone, if I'm not mistaken. It's like a golden light champagne highlight. I love it. Next up, I'm going to use this setting spray. It is blurring. You still have a glow to your skin. It just kind of refines the pores, makes them look flawless. Now for my lip combo, I'm going in with this Makeup by Mario lip liner. It has become a favorite so quickly. This is the shade Travis. It's just the perfect brown. I have no complaints with this lip liner. It's not too dark. It's not too red. It doesn't look like you have like a mustache because some brown lip liners can make you look like that. This one looks perfect. It has a little bit of a reddish tint to it, but just the perfect amount. You can tell that it's still brown. And I do love the little brush on the other end to blend it out before you go in with your lip color. Here I'm adding lipstick. It is by Anastasia Beverly Hills and it's in the shade Tease. This quickly became a combo that I'm going to continue to do. I just picked out random lip products, but I feel like they went together so perfectly. I tapped it. I didn't really make it super pigmented so that it could look more natural. And now I'm going in with this NYX lip gloss in Milk and Honey and that completed the look. I love it. You can wear this look pretty much anywhere. And now I'm going to go in with my scent of the day. I'm using Do Not Disturb Body Mist from Sol de Janeiro, spraying that all over the place. And I'm following that up with Raja Parfums Oceania, super unisex ocean fresh vibes, citrusy, and it lasts a super long time. And I sprayed way too much. You do not need that much. That is one strong, good quality perfume it will last you all day. So thank you so, so much for being here with me today. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and got some tips from me. Comment down below, like the video. It helps my channel out so, so much. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and I'll see you next time. All right, what vibes are we going for today? I think I wanna go back to 2016-ish. She's shallow.